Cursed energy is the foundation of Jujutsu Kaisen and its entire lore and world building revealed thus far. Cursed energy is found in everyone except a few people who are born with little to no cursed energy at all. A type of energy that can be used just like a sorcerer using magic. Being able to harness this power to perform amazing abilities. From using it to enchant weapons called cursed tools, to enhancing the user's body, controlling lightning, basing your abilities off gambling, creating black holes, to even controlling the concept of infinity. Cursed energy is a great power system and because of this cursed energy, it can cause the manifestation of cursed spirits. Spiritual entities created by negative emotions such as anger and fear. They can represent many things, such as animals, to ideas, to even being manifestations of natural disasters. And cursed energy is all over the world, but in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, they basically have it the worst in Japan due to Tengen's barrier that optimizes cursed energy. It's not a Japan original concept, but it is the worst in Japan, and around a thousand years ago during the Heian era, it was at its peak. Cursed spirits and cursed energy can take on the form representing what culture they originate from. So many of the sorcerers and cursed spirits seen are based on Asian culture. Take Gato Suguru for example, a sorcerer capable of summoning and creating cursed spirits. Even though he's Japanese, one of the cursed spirits resembles a Chinese dragon. There's also the spirit he summoned to try to slice Toji who was clearly based off the Japanese urban legend of Kuchisagi Ona, or the slit mouth woman. Take Maharaga, a powerful Shikigami with the ability of reactive evolution, who seems to take heavy inspiration from Hindu and Buddhist mythology. His outfit and appearance are clearly Asian in origin, sporting a black Hakama bottoms and white sash. Maharaga is named after a race of deities in Hinduism, Judaism, and Jainism. Having a serpentine appearance just like Maharaga's head, the wheel on his head, which goes in conjunction with his adaptation ability, represents the Dharma Chakra of Hinduism, which refers to the Wheel of Cosmic Order or Law. The eight handles also signify the eightfold paths of Buddhism, which lays a path to mental and ethical development, which could also be seen as his ability of adaptation being based off of it, him constantly developing in battle. Not to mention Megami's other Shikigami also having resemblance to Asian culture as well, such as his Max Elephant seeming to take inspiration from Hindu and Indian design, Maharaga's Hindu and Buddhist design, his Great Serpent appearing to be Japanese, etc. So it's obvious that cursed spirits and energy take resemblance based on the country of origin, and it's confirmed that there is cursed energy outside of Japan. In Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Geto had worked with another sorcerer named Miguel Oduo. In African Sorcerer, he had a cursed tool called the Black Rope, being able to disrupt and cancel out cursed energy such as literally bypassing Gojo's infinity. Only one other person and cursed tool was able to do that and it was Toji with his inverted Spear of Heaven. This rope literally needed decades to be woven by the sorcerers of Miguel's clan, putting in so much energy that it took that amount of time to bypass such a powerful ability overseas. After the events of Zero, Yuta had went with Miguel to Africa to search for the remaining black rope and to undergo training. And this is where I say that JJK has a lot of potential but unused world building. It's not confirmed specifically where Miguel is from, but a lot of fans believe that he's from Kenya, along with the recent chapter 255 narrowing it down to him being Kenyan. I really think that Gigi should try to reveal more about cursed energy and sorcerers outside of Japan. Miguel is a perfect starter for the exploration of foreign Jujutsu sorcerers. Since cursed spirits can take on the form of Asian themes, there must be cursed spirits in Africa that resemble the cultures. Since there's a cursed spirit based off the Chinese dragon, there's probably a cursed spirit based off the Mokele Mumbembe. Africa is also a very diverse continent. Culture, themes, and mythology are very diverse. There could be a wide variety of cursed spirits and techniques based on the mythological creatures, urban legends, cryptids, and cultures of Africa, and Miguel could be a perfect introduction to it. Also, spoilers obviously, at the time of me writing the script, Miguel has just shown up again in the manga and saved Ui Ui from Sukuna and is currently fighting him too, alongside Laru, Yuji, and Maki. After being convinced by Laru to mourn Geto and the other sorcerers that were killed in Shibuya, Miguel would use a cursed technique called the Hakuna Lana to avoid Sukuna's attacks, which would also narrow down his nationality to Kenyan. Hukuna Lana in Swahili means something along the lines of no curses or there is no curse, 
Swahili being a Bantu language that's widely used in East Africa and is the official language for Kenya. I highly doubt Miguel is going to be put out of commission as soon as possible by Sukuna, which would of course give Miguel more time to show us some other cursed techniques or maybe even cursed tools from his home country. Also on about cursed tools, there is clear real world inspiration in some of the cursed tools. Sukuna, after fighting Gojo, used a cursed tool called the Kamutoke, a weapon that can summon lightning, which should be based off the Vajra, a symbol in Buddhism that usually is associated with the god of thunder, Indra. There's of course the incredibly powerful black rope from Africa and the inverted spear of heaven. Used by the Aztecs and other Mesoamerican cultures, it was usually made of wood with a row of obsidian. Obsidian is volcanic glass and it's actually one of the sharpest substances in the world. Literally sharper than a scalpel though it is fragile. And that's what made it so dangerous to use as a sword. It is a perfect cursed tool. Could you imagine cursed tools based on mythologies and beliefs all over the world? Excalibur, the Fountain of Youth, the Spear of Longinus, the cross that Jesus Christ was crucified on, the Philosopher's Stone, the stone that Cain used to kill his brother Abel? Like if Cain and Abel existed in JJK, the stone that was used by the first murderer in history to kill his own brother must have crazy amounts of cursed energy. I don't actually believe these will fit in JJK, I'm just going on a tangent. In JJK Zero, they mentioned another company called the Ainu Jujutsu Company. The Ainu people are indigenous to Hokkaido and parts of Russia, being the earliest settlers of Hokkaido and are the indigenous people of Japan. There is an entire company in JJK about it, but it seems to have just been mentioned briefly, and I think it's a perfect opportunity to explore it. In Ainu Legend, the title of a sacred Yukar epic refers to a magical sword called the Itadori Maru. I'm not saying it has any actual connections to Yuji Itadori, but it would be a really cool coincidence and a weapon like that could serve as a perfect cursed tool. And ironically, Japan's indigenous haven't really shown up a lot in Japanese works besides animes like Shaman King. I wanted to talk about Kenjaku's merger event and Yuki mentioning that the Middle East would not remain silent. There are several countries highlighted that seem to be Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, and Oman. Just like how there's curses based off several Asian cultures, what about Middle Eastern? Let's look at the jinn, also called genies. Creatures that existed pre-Islamic Arabia and later in Islamic beliefs. They are neither good or evil, but can be either. Individual jinn can appear on charms and talismans and they can be called upon for protection or magical aid against other jinn that are sent by sorcerers or witches. Yuki says that the Middle East would not remain silent if the Great Merger were to happen, meaning if it did, there would most likely be a character from the Middle East possessing cursed techniques based on Middle Eastern and Islamic culture and mythology, possibly even having a jinn accompanying them, just like Yuka having the Garuda, which would be really cool. What if there was a Mayan sorcerer whose cursed technique was based off Shalotl, a Mayan god who is the god of fire, lightning, monsters, deformities, misfortune, and sickness? He has two spiritual animal forms called the Sholos, a Sholo it's Quintly and an Axolotl. What if that sorcerer had control over two cursed spirits or the Mayan version of the Shikigami that were based off the Axolotl and the Sholo it's Quintly? Axolotls are known for their regeneration, being able to completely regenerate fatal wounds, such as lost limbs, organs, their spinal cord, and even parts of their brain. Just like how Round Deer possesses a healing factor and could heal Sukuna with reverse curse technique, what about the Axolotl, giving the sorcerer a healing factor as well? And what about a cursed spirit based off the Sholo It's Quintly, a pre-Columbian dog from Mesoamerica dating back to over 3,500 years ago? Their names reference Shololol because the dog's mission was to accompany the souls of the dead on their journey into eternity. A cursed spirit could possibly have the ability to accompany their user in some way, possibly being used to guide their sorcerer to a perfect position in a battlefield with another sorcerer, guiding them to a perfect spot to dodge an attack or go on the offense. In Inuit mythology, the Kalu Piluit are creatures that live along the Arctic shorelines. They are said to steal children that wander off too close to the water. A lot of Inuit mythology is really just parents telling stories to their kids to protect them from the dangerous environment. And if they're told that some creature will kidnap them if they wander too close to the water, they're less likely to do it. In Oceanic and Polynesian cultures, there is mana, a supernatural force that permeates the universe. 
a spiritual energy and healing power. Anything and anyone can have mana. In Japan, it's called Jujutsu, but in places like Samoa, it would probably be called mana. Everything has mana, including inanimate objects, which could tie into Japan and how a domain expansion would work on anything with cursed energy and not attack inanimate objects. Just like how domain expansions perceive Maki as an inanimate object because she has no cursed energy, while in Polynesian culture, regular objects do, with mana. But however, mana protects its possessor as well, so it'd be really neat to see how a Polynesian sorcerer would do in Japan. There's many things that the exploration of foreign sorcerers can do, expanding on the lore, showing the, what the world was like a thousand years ago, and other things, such as making the strongest characters in the series, Satoru Gojo and Ryomen Sukuna, even stronger. Sukuna was born over a thousand years ago, during the Heian era, where Jujutsu was at its peak, and he was still the strongest. Many people assume that he's only the strongest in Japanese history, but if Japan had it the most and the worst in the entire world during a time where Jujutsu was at its peak, then he would still scale to being the strongest in history even compared to other countries. One of the biggest indicators of Sukuna's strength was comparing him to other cursed spirits and users. Jogo is a really powerful cursed spirit. His meteor was calculated at around being small town level, and he was literally melting and burning down Shibuya. Yet yeah, all that destructive power was still nothing compared to Sukuna who had 15 fingers and was just holding back. He completely decimated Hajime Kashimo, and Kashimo is not weak at all. I would put him at top 10. It's the same case with Jogo. They themselves are incredibly strong if they're not fighting the literal strongest characters in the verse. Besides Satoru Gojo, he easily scales above every single other character. For both Satoru Gojo and Ryom and Sukuna, introducing this type of material with just scaling alone can show how they are leagues above everyone else. If there is a foreign sorcerer who is just on a completely different level than modern sorcerers, yet Gojo and Sukuna still are on a different level than them, that will drive even further the point of how powerful Gojo and Sukuna really are, and how they can handle cursed energy from other countries. And Gigi has made it very clear that Gojo and Sukuna are supposed to be the strongest. Ever since we've seen Gojo, it's been made very clear how a sorcerer can have one of the strongest abilities and could affect every single person with a dangerous attack, except for Satoru Gojo of course. With Sukuna, after beating Gojo and being almost fully complete, he has still decimated just about every single character that's been thrown at him. Being on a completely different league than the rest of them, even being bored and spacing out mid-fight. The characters we've seen are not weak. Kashimo is not weak. Jogo is not weak. Every other character that lost against him wasn't weak at all, and he was still on a different level. Now imagine introducing foreign sorcerers to the fight and Sukuna still being able to come out on top, showing powerful sorcery from all over the world, and still showing how much of a monster that Sukuna really is. And there is of course showing more characters as well. Imagine a Samoan sorcerer having a heavenly restriction being a physical powerhouse but actually still having just a bit of cursed energy or, in his case, mana. Or a Scandinavian sorcerer who has a Shikigami based on the Norse plant spirit, Biolante. I think it's a scenario where both ideas can benefit. A cool foreign sorcerer shows off their abilities based on their culture and Sukuna and Gojo still outclass them. This sorcerer from Ghana has the ability to predict every single curse technique and redirect it back at the opponent. He has a perfect counter for everyone, except for Satoru Gojo of course. This Romani sorcerer can manipulate molecules and create entire new curse techniques and completely destroy any other curse technique. But it wouldn't work on Gojo because he's Satoru Gojo of course. This Taino sorcerer can predict any attack an opponent makes and understand how their cursed technique works. He's probably the most dangerous sorcerer, except for Satoru Gojo of course. Now I'm not saying that Gigi has to absolutely 100% introduce foreign sorcerers and include them in the fight with Sukuna. I'm not at all saying that it would make the series better or anything like that. I really like Miguel and is perfectly fine if he seems to be the only shown foreign sorcerer. I just think it would be cool if we had a Middle Eastern or a Native American sorcerer shown in the series too and expanding a bit on the lore of JJK. 
yeah, this could be seen as me adding my own lore to the story with my own headcanons, especially with including the idea of mana, but that's how I imagine it will go down if the scenario was possible. I'm certainly not complaining about anything at all in this series. I feel like some people are just talking about JJK either as hype or to find something to complain about. I love this series with my whole heart, and I'm just saying that, you know, foreign sorcerers introduced especially with what's happening now, would just be pretty cool. Like, you can't tell me a Samoan sorcerer with a heavenly restriction, but still access to some cursed energy taking on Sukuna wouldn't go crazy. I've only really posted shorts about JJK, but I've been wanting to make more videos about it, like Sukuna's design, the contrast and similarities between Yuji and Mahito, how strong is Toji Fushigoro, etc. I think my next video will be Godzilla vs. Gojo. Thanks for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments. Join my Patreon. I got links to my socials in the description. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you want to see next. Please be kind to yourself and each other. Thanks for watching.